SpaceX's Starship rocket is equipped with 39 methane-fueled Raptor engines, 33 on the first-stage Super Heavy booster, and 6 on the Starship upper stage. CEO Elon Musk recently revealed in a tweet that future Starship vehicles will feature three more Raptor engines, boosting the vehicle's total thrust. Those three engines will be vacuum-optimized Raptor engines, designed to efficiently propel the ship through the vacuum of space. Musk added that, though the total thrust generated by the Starship will increase with the addition of three more vacuum Raptors, it will limit the inner engine gimbal angle in some directions, which according to him, is unlikely to cause any issues during flight. In a separate tweet, Musk revealed that SpaceX is working to increase Raptor thrust by 20% to attain 9,000 tons of force during liftoff. The current generation of Raptor V2 engines generates 230 tons of force at sea level. A 20% increase will bring that to 276 tons. In May, Musk revealed that the next-generation Raptor V3 engine produced a thrust of 269 tons at sea level on a test stand. His latest tweet means that a Raptor 3 design can be improved to produce 276 tons of force at sea level, which is equal to 2.7 meganewtons of thrust. According to Musk, this increased thrust level will allow a Starship to deliver over 200 tons of payload into orbit, with full and rapid reusability. He added that, on average, 50 rockets flying every three days enable over a megaton of payload to orbit annually, which is enough to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. Starship orbital launch pad repair and upgrade work is nearing completion. SpaceX recently completed the installation of the major sections of the water-cooled steel plates designed to protect the launch pad from damage during future Starship launches. The large centerpiece of the steel plate assembly was installed under the launch mount on July 5. Three steel plates with manifolds arrived at the launch site the next day. All three plates were installed one by one under the launch mount on July 7 and 8. The installation of the final three steel plates, which are needed to finish the steel plate assembly, will happen soon. This animation made by Space Engineer shows how the steel plates are being installed under the launch mount. The assembly of the water storage tanks, high-pressure gas tanks, and pipes that deliver water to the steel plates is progressing behind the launch tower. The high-pressure gas travels from the gas canisters through two separate paths and ends up in two large and four smaller water storage tanks. The water stored inside the tanks will be pumped toward the launch mount by high-pressure gas. The water from the water tanks will flow towards the steel plates through two separate delivery pipes with varying diameters. Pressurized water will flow through the channels inside the steel plates before being discharged under the launch mount like a shower head. The water released will cool the metal surface and simultaneously absorb energy from the booster engine plume during liftoff. A large Y-shaped splitter pipe was installed near the launch mount on July 8. The splitter pipe splits the water coming through the larger diameter delivery pipe and diverts it to two of the three steel plates with manifolds. The third steel plate with manifold will be directly connected to the smaller diameter delivery pipe from the storage tanks. SpaceX conducted a water deluge system purge test on July 12. During the test, the gas stored inside the high-pressure cylinders flowed into the storage tanks, purging the pipes, valves, and manifolds in the process. More such tests can be expected in the coming days before SpaceX fills the storage tanks with water to test the water-cooled steel plate system. The launch tower arm, which had been raised to the top of the tower weeks ago to make room for the cranes that lift the steel plates and large pipe sections, was brought down last week, indicating SpaceX has completed the installation of all the large pieces of the deluge system. We can expect the steel plate water deluge system to be operational shortly. Once the launch mount and launch pad are completely ready, Super Heavy Booster 9 will be moved to the launch site to begin static fire tests on the launch mount. Starship 25, which had successfully completed a six-engine static fire test on June 26, is still sitting on suborbital launch pad B. The ship was recently secured by a crane to allow workers to safely climb inside for inspections and repairs. Right after the six-engine static fire test, teams removed engine shielding from the ship for some unknown reason. The shields were moved from the launch site to the build site on July 11. The Starship test tank comprised of a payload bay and an e-dome with a 24-hole sleeve was recently spotted at the build site. The serial number given to the test article is ship 24.2. The test article will probably soon be put through structural tests inside the test cage, located at SpaceX's Massey's test facility. We can now confirm that the 24-hold sleeve, which was previously thought could be part of Starship hot staging, is actually part of this test article. So now it's highly likely that the steel ring section with multiple cutouts seen at the build site in May is a mock-up of the interstage through which exhaust from the Starship during hot staging will escape.
Super Heavy Booster 10 was moved to SpaceX's Massey's test site on July 8. The booster will undergo cryogenic proof tests at Massey's in the coming weeks. It will be the first time a booster will undergo pre-launch tests outside the Starbase launch site. Teams recently installed grid fins on the methane tank section of Super Heavy Booster 12, which is currently inside the Mega Bay. The new Mega Bay building, being constructed north of the existing Mega Bay, has grown in size in the past week. The construction of the fourth level of Mega Bay is currently underway. The building will have a total of seven levels when completed. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. A private Chinese company recently launched a rocket into space, beating SpaceX's Starship to become the world's first methane-fueled rocket to reach orbit. The Zhuk-2 rocket, developed by Chinese company Land Space, lifted off from Jiaquin Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert on July 12. The rocket successfully delivered a test payload into a sun-synchronous orbit several minutes after liftoff, becoming the first methane-fueled rocket to enter orbit. The mission's success has verified the various schemes of Zhuk-2 and laid a solid foundation for developing future land space rockets. Wednesday's mission was Zhuk-2's second launch after its maiden flight in December 2022, which failed to reach orbit owing to an early shutdown of its second-stage engines. Zhuk-2, with a takeoff mass of 219 tons, is a two-stage rocket that stands 49.5 meters tall, with a diameter of 3.35 meters. The medium-sized launch vehicle has a maximum payload capacity of 4 tons for a 500-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit and up to 6 tons for a 200-kilometer low-Earth orbit. The first stage of the rocket is powered by four TQ-12 engines. They are gas generator open-cycle liquid methane liquid oxygen engines, capable of producing a combined thrust of 2,680 kilonewtons at liftoff. According to Landspace, the first stage will feature reuse capabilities in the future. The rocket features a single vacuum-optimized TQ-12 engine in the second stage, assisted by four TQ-11 vernier engines. After the second stage burn is complete, the four vernier engines will bring the rocket into the final orbit, using a more precise thrust. The success of the Zhuk-2 mission beats a range of other Methalux rockets, including SpaceX's Starship, ULA's Vulcan, Rocket Lab's Neutron, Blue Origin's New Glenn, and Terran R from Relativity Space in reaching orbit. Following the successful flight, Land Space declared that they could now begin the mass production process for Zhuk-2, with the launch having finalized and verified its design. The Indian Space Research Organization launched the Chandrayaan-3 lunar lander mission from Satish Dhawan Space Center on July 14, atop a Launch Vehicle Mark III rocket. Launch Vehicle Mark III is India's medium lift launcher, capable of launching heavier payloads than the other rockets ISRO has developed. About 16 minutes after liftoff, Chandrayaan-3 separated from the rocket's upper stage and entered into a parking orbit around the Earth. The spacecraft will gradually raise its apogee over the course of the next 17 days before performing a translunar injection burn to enter the lunar orbit. The Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft comprises a propulsion module, an indigenous lunar lander module, and a lunar rover. When Chandrayaan-3 nears the moon, the propulsion module thrusters will fire up to nudge the spacecraft into a tight circular polar lunar orbit, about 100 kilometers above the surface. If all goes according to plan, the lander and rover will separate from the propulsion module and safely touch down near the lunar south pole on August 23rd or 24th. The Chandrayaan-3 lunar lander, named Vikram, is equipped with three payloads to record thermal conductivity and sense moonquakes around the landing site, among other data. Upon touchdown, the rover, Pragyan, will roll off Vikram to explore the nearby region. Pragyan has two instruments on board to conduct on-site experiments, with which scientists hope to gain valuable technical data about the moon's composition near the landing site. As the equipment works on solar energy, the lander and the rover will gather scientific data on the surface for 14 Earth days, which is equal to one lunar day. The primary function of the propulsion module is to carry the lander module to the 100-kilometer lunar orbit and act as a communication relay satellite between the lander and the Earth. Apart from this, the propulsion module also has one scientific payload, which will be operated post-separation of the lander module. The spectropolarimetry of habitable planet Earth payload will study the spectral and polarimetric measurements of Earth from the lunar orbit. Chandrayaan-1, launched in 2008, was India's first mission to the Moon. The mission consisted of a lunar orbiter and a moon impact probe that was released from the orbiter to deliberately crash into the lunar surface. Chandrayaan-1 is best known for finding evidence of water ice on the Moon. The Moon Impact Probe also found water's signature before impacting the surface, providing a separate set of data. Chandrayaan-2, launched in 2019, was India's second mission to the Moon. 
The mission was a partial failure as the lunar lander lost contact with Earth and crashed onto the lunar surface while attempting a soft landing. Meanwhile, Chandrayaan 2's lunar orbiter is still in operation and continues to send back high-definition imagery of the lunar surface. The orbiter will be used for communications with Earth as a backup if Chandrayaan 3's propulsion module underperforms. Chandrayaan 3 has similar goals as its predecessor, with additional fail-safe measures that may help the spacecraft reach its milestones even if a few things don't go as planned. Those changes include a new instrument to precisely calculate the spacecraft's descent speed, stronger legs for the lander to handle a higher landing speed, as well as a wider landing site. In addition to extra solar panels to help the spacecraft generate power regardless of its orientation upon landing, the new mission also has more fuel that could be used to travel to another landing site if necessary. If Chandrayaan-3 is successful, India will become the first country to touch down near the moon's south pole and the fourth country to successfully soft land a spacecraft on the moon after the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China. CNBC reports that one of Blue Origin's powerful BE-4 rocket engines failed during an engine acceptance testing last month. The BE-4 engine that will power Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket and United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur exploded about 10 seconds into a test conducted at Blue Origin's West Texas facility on June 30. According to CNBC, several people familiar with the matter described having seen a video of a dramatic explosion that destroyed the engine and heavily damaged the test stand infrastructure. The exploded engine was supposed to complete testing in July and then be shipped to United Launch Alliance to be used on the second Vulcan Centaur launch. A Blue Origin spokesperson, in a statement to CNBC, confirmed the incident and said no personnel were injured and they are currently assessing the root cause of the failure. Blue Origin also said it would be able to continue testing engines in West Texas and will be able to meet engine delivery commitments and stay ahead of their customers' launch needs. According to ULA, the anomaly is not expected to impact the first Vulcan launch, as the engines for that mission have already passed acceptance testing and are qualified for the mission. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.